Hey there, Daniel here again. In this video, I'm following up on the video I created yesterday talking about customer interviews and customer surveys that I've run in my studio. Now, it's long been a, a habit of mine to uh, reach out to my customers to find out what they're thinking. And this has kind of become known on my blog and, and people who followed me have, have uh, long known that I've done this. What I wanted to talk about, what I wanted to delve into in these videos is what do you do with all that data? What can you do other than just read the comments and, and know what to do? So we're going to dive into that today. Before I do that though, I have two things and I don't often do this in these videos. Uh, go a little bit off topic and talk more than just business or studio strategy, but two thoughts. If you're watching this video and you're going to the MTNA National Conference in March, I would really love to know that. So if you're watching this video and you're going to the conference, just write that in the comments below. Say, hey, I'm going to be there. It'd be really cool to bump into you, maybe chat for a bit, uh, maybe even organize a meetup of a lot of the Grow Your Music Studio blog readers. So write that in the comments below. Second thing, and this is just completely ridiculous and fun, but I have been going back and looking through at all the videos that I've been posting since over the last couple months. And it seems that... <laughs> and someone pointed this out to me, that it looks like I'm a monster because most of the videos, when Facebook automatically creates a thumbnail, I'm in some variation of like a pose that looks like I'm getting ready to attack people. So um, I'm going to consciously try to not look like a monster from here on out. Anyway, uh, just a fun thought. So moving on to the topic at hand, and that is what do you do with customer feedback and surveys? Okay, so I've been helping a group of studio owners and music school owners. I've been helping this group to help improve their marketing. In fact, I've been teaching them my marketing system uh, from tip to tail, everything, the ads, all of it. And one of the parts of the process that I insisted that everyone do was run a survey to the studio. And this is what was interesting. And, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move on to what we're gonna do with it in a minute, but I just wanna point this out, several of those studio owners were actually nervous to run the survey to their studio. Several of the studio owners were not excited about that. In fact, one confessed that they you know, kind of had knots in their stomach with the thought of actually reading feedback from their customers. Okay, so that in and of its own right, I could probably do an entire video on, and I certainly relate to it. Back in the day when I was a brand new teacher, if, if, if I was in a difficult, discussion or was having difficulty with a particular parent and I got an email from that parent, I would very often ignore that email for days. I was, I guess my ego couldn't handle it or I was afraid what might be in there or maybe I was afraid I was losing a student. So I certainly can relate. I totally get that. So what I'm going to say today is actually going to be much, much worse because what I'm going to suggest that you should do inside a survey is actually ask for negative feedback. And I was reading um, in one of the Facebook groups, I think it was the Studio Challenge, and I can't remember who said this, but um, I was reading some comments from some studio owners who had been running surveys in their studio, and one of them mentioned that they stopped doing it because it seemed as if all people said was, you're doing really well, or they use it to complain about every single thing. Okay, so here's the thought. Here's why you should actually solicit negative feedback from your customers. Because one of two things is happening, or maybe one of three. Either you actually are doing something wrong, or they have a misunderstanding about what it is that they're going to be getting from you in their studio, or in your studio. So I'll just say it again. Either you actually are doing something wrong, and if that's the case, you'd want to correct that, or they have a misunderstanding or misperception about what you're offering, about what you've promised, about what your role is and what their role is and what is expected of you and what's expected of them, what's expected of the student. In any case, getting negative feedback like that is, is crucial for good marketing and good messaging. Let's take the most cranky parent, okay? Let's just think, let's just do a mental exercise. Let's say it's a parent that's just being unreasonable. There's something you can learn even from that, even if they're saying just utter nonsense or things that, you know, aren't all that helpful. You learn you learn how parents are perceiving how they can treat you. Even, even feedback like that is crucial. 
I, I have said it many times, I will say it many, many times again, is that you can never over communicate, you can never over ask questions, you can never get too much information. All of it is strategic. All of it will help you become a better business owner. All of it will help you make better strategic business decisions. And if you're getting a lot of people that are, you know, putting in spurious comments, maybe it's time to, <laughs> maybe it's time to prune the tree, so to speak. Um, because if people are, you know, on one hand becoming customers, but on the other hand are talking to you or thinking negative thoughts behind your back, maybe you go on a customer education campaign and you push those complaints down or decrease the complaints, not push them down. I'm not talking about squelching them. I'm just talking about decreasing complaints by going on a, on a communication or education campaign. But there's so many things you can do to do that. Now, I wanted to give a specific example. Um, and this is a big one. This is one that I dealt with years ago, and there is a way that I solved it. So as an example of what I'm talking about here and soliciting negative feedback or just listening to parents or even just asking for that kind of feedback in person and this parent or many parents volunteered this information. But what I became aware of over time was that parents had this feeling that I was the one or they had this misconception that I was the one that was supposed to be getting the student to practice. I would get these comments from parents like, yeah, you need to tell them to practice more when they come home. And as a young teacher, I took that, I actually took that to myself and I thought, oh, that's my job. But then as I got further into my career, I saw my role not as a practice cheerleader. I saw my role as an educator and a business owner and that there is a triangle between me, the student and the parent. I can control my relationship with the student. I can control my relationship with the parent, but I cannot control the relationship between the student and the parent. And for me to start trying to take on the responsibility that the parent has, it's not going to work. I'm trying to reach across that triangle there. That's never going to work. Similarly, I, this is me up here. I can, you know, here's me. I can control my relationship with the student and I can control my own relationship with practice and what I say about it and what I believe about it, but I can never impact what the student thinks about it. So it'd be improper for me to try it. It'll only cause stress. When I became aware of these concepts, I then began to see my role actually as an educator of the parents and either A, empowering them to empower their child at home or B, and this is what I actually did, although I did some of the first, what I really chose to do was let's just take practice out of the equation at all. And this is what led me over many years to create and promote the group lesson program that I run in my own studio that has an emphasis on students practicing in the studio and learning all their music in the studio. And once I did that, the practice complaints dropped way, way down. That combined with the messaging, the customer education, that whole piece of the business that every studio owner should be doing, but more often than not isn't, that educational part more than made up for it. So I solved that problem in a number of different ways. And again, if I hadn't been listening, if I hadn't been asking, if I hadn't been soliciting negative feedback, I would never have known this. And I will tell you that part of the magic of my studio, part of what has helped me over the last 60 days get something like 40 odd requests for lessons. Part of the reason why the studio has such a great reputation is in large part because of the reputation that's come around how I do practice in the studio. I have solved that problem for parents and therefore that word is kind of getting around and it's very evident in my marketing that I've solved that problem and people are attracted to that marketing. Again, it's the power of asking for feedback. It's the power for asking for um, those negative comments. You know, there's other things that we could do and you know, there's a couple people watching right now. Uh, you know, you could write something right in the chat right now, a, a problem that you're experiencing in your studio and I can, I'd be more than happy to answer it here. Or if you write it after this video is over, more than happy to jump into the comments and, and follow up with you in the comments and talk about perhaps a strategy to solve a problem that you're having in your studio. So anyway, I think that's all we're going to do for the day. As I mentioned yesterday, I have several thoughts. There's going to, this is going to be, this video here is one in a series of videos that I'm going to be doing on what to do with survey results, customer feedback, things that you hear from parents in person. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video and we're going to finish up this series then. Have a great day.